the May update has been released. In it, we get some more interesting details and some nice GIFs, in-game graphics and concept arts. This update gives some insights about the mini-boss design of the game as well as their fighting patterns. Later, we get some more details about the game mechanics for the upcoming game, so stay tuned for a full review of this month's update. Last month, they explained the Ichtian faction in detail, some sea monster hybrids that work together and fight as a faction. This month, the focus is about enemies that fight all alone, strong mini bosses. The first one will encounter the player relatively early in the game, the Griffin. This mythological beast is also a hybrid of an eagle and a lion, with an eagle's head, wings and talons, and a lion's body. Quite a fearsome combination, and the artwork looks superb. The GIF also looks good, but the coloring of the feathers looks somewhat different than in the artwork. Maybe in the final game the mini-boss will look different and a bit more flashy than in this GIF. The devlog goes on with The Griffin's most powerful ability has it take off into the air and utilize a powerful swooping attack. As an agile creature, it will also be capable of pouncing around the player, lashing out several times in a row where at least expected. This then gets rounded out by several variants of regular melee attacks. While this is the first and easiest mini-boss you will come across, we still intend for it to pose a threat and test your combat fundamentals. This is some interesting info. In Titan Quest 1, the flying enemies were just on the ground all the time and they could be attacked by melee attacks easily. The only exception was the dragon in the Atlantis DLC. This one took off and attacked you from the air, which is more realistic. I understand that the basic flying enemies in Tartacus 1, like crows or harpies, had to be designed in a way that the player will not have too much trouble when fighting them. For flying mini-bosses, I like it that they actually fly in the air, where you can't attack them and swoop down. This adds more realism to the fights and sounds fun as well. The second mini-boss that the Devlog spoilers is the Hippocampus. Here we also get an artwork which looks good and actually intimidating. Hippocampi are what the ancient Greeks believed the adult form of the seahorses looked like. So they made a seahorse which looks all cute into a monster, nice. I have to say for this one the artwork looks not that great, but the GIF is a lot more impressive. So it's actually the other way around compared to how the griffin was portrayed in this devlog. This enemy will attack with cold and lightning damage, as well as a geyser eruption attack that is telegraphed, meaning the player will get a hint that some big attack is coming, so it's better to dodge. The developers also state that they experiment with some spell immunity for this mini-boss, so it can't be stunned or targeted by crowd control spells. This could make for an interesting mini-boss fight. The Hippocampus will be encountered by the player later in the game and the fight is going to be harder than when fighting with a griffin. It will be important to memorize the attack patterns of the mini-boss. Attack with good timing and dodge when big attacks are coming. This strategy is quite common for boss fights, for games in general, and Title Quest 2 will apparently be no exception. In the last part of the devlog, it is described that the death carries a heavy price in Title Quest 2. The entire encounter that killed you, whether it's a boss or not, gets fully reset, and you will respawn in the previous hub convenient teleport options will be provided though. This sounds interesting. In Title Quest 1, death was not such a big deal. You had these fountains that you could activate at every stage of the map. Then when you died, you respawn at the last fountain and you had to retrieve your gravestone that you dropped upon death to reclaim some XP that you lost when dying. It is unclear if this system will be the same in Title Quest 2 but the phrase, 
death will have a high price makes me think that the player might get punished harder for dying. The devlog also mentions that you can also level up your character and find new items before returning to the area where you died, so you return stronger and have a better chance at clearing the area. The log mentions resistances in that regard, for example, if the hippocampus has an ice attack and kills you over and over again, then it's probably good to get some armor item that has cold resistance on it. Resistances were a big part of Titan Quest 1 and they balanced the game to some degree. You could make a character that has a super high damage output but lacks resistances, making them weaker against certain types of damage. You could also go to the other end of the spectrum and make a character with high resistances but not the biggest damage output. A middle way between these two extremes has proven to be the best and maybe this will also be the case for Titan Quest 2. At the end of the devlog it is stated, on the other hand, if you are looking for even more of a challenge you can raise the difficulty by invoking rituals. It is not clear what is meant by this. Maybe it's similar to the Electron mechanic in Tartar Quest 1. This feature has been implemented to the game not too long ago. Here you could activate curses that made your character more vulnerable to all sorts of attacks. But at the same time you collected Electrum coins for monster kills that you could trade in for strong items. Maybe the mention in the devlog of invoking rituals will be something similar. In the very last sentence of this announcement this is written. Lastly, these fights are not one-off experiences, as you will be able to resummon these beasts in order to reap the rewards again and again. We will talk about these rewards in more detail soon. A resummon mechanic is something new. In Titan Quest 1, you could only kill a mini-boss, exit the game, reload to kill them again. It seems we will get a new mechanic in Titan Quest 2. The next devlog will be about rewards, so in other words the items, so let's look forward to that. It would be nicer to just have the game released, but it seems it will take at least 3 to 4 months from now for Titan Quest 2 to be released. Upcoming monthly devlog updates will cover items, then maybe game mechanics and then maybe bosses, so we can expect 3 more at least. As soon as the game comes out, I will make hero build guides, game mechanic and item explanations. Subscribe to not miss any of that, as well as the best Tata Quest 2 news. Thanks for watching, bye.